Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the Bible study today. Thank you because of your spirit that is always present with us to teach us, to enlighten us, to interpret the word to every one of us and to apply the word to every heart. We are praying, O oh Lord, as we come here today, in your faithfulness, you'll teach us your word and make us ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We know that in the book of Revelation, we're studying the period of the great tribulation. And we know that the rapture is going to take place before that time. We're praying, Lord, that you'll so qualify every one of us spiritually, that we'll be ready for the rapture in Jesus' name. So then we'll be able to escape all the things that are coming upon the world through the time of the great tribulation. Be with us, Lord. Help every one of us to be wise unto salvation and to keep our salvation so that we will not toil, we will not joke, we will not gamble with the spiritual life that will qualify us to meet you on that final day. Be with us today, Lord, and let this word enrich our lives and then move us on to help other people to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can do better than that. Give me a good amen. amen. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study today. We're looking at Revelation chapter 18. Open your Bible with me as we read together from verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily. With a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities, reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double, how much she has glorified herself. And live deliciously or delicately so much, torment, torment, and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall no more see, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burnt with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. As you look at what we're studying today, you'll see the title is right down your outline, The Judgment and the Destruction of Babylon the Great. And you look at verse 8 again, and it says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt to a fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. As you look at this chapter in connection with the previous chapter, you'll see that the previous chapter, that is chapter 17, mentioned Babylon. And this chapter also mentions Babylon. But you want to understand there's a difference between the two. Because in chapter 17, we're dealing with mystery Babylon in verse 5 of chapter 17 and upon her upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth but in the case of chapter 18 we're looking at Babylon the city in the case of uh, chapter 17 it's a woman it's a harlot it's a mother of abominations and it's mystery Babylon but this one is a materialistic Babylon. And we're told in chapter 18 verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Look at verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? 19. 
and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that achieves in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate we're looking then at the city or the materialistic babylon in this chapter actually as you study the old testament you'll understand that ancient babylon the city had already been destroyed and it is never to be rebuilt or inhabited again that you'll find in jeremiah as well as isaiah but there is a future city that is referred to as babylon and in this chapter 18 you have that babylon it's the final financial uh, commercial center of the world and it will be the capital city of the antichrist it is referred to with the name babylon just as jerusalem is referred to as sodom in revelation chapter 11 verse 8 babylon the babylon of the future will be an enormous city a populous den of iniquity its destruction will be at the time of the seven vial or bowl of judgment near the very end of the great tribulation as you look at revelation chapter 16 you'll see the preview of the destruction of this babylon the great babylon the city look at chapter 16 looking at it from verse 17 and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the into the air and then there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and a great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath so then you will see that we're studying about babylon the great the great city and it is going to be destroyed and it's the babylon of the last days during the time of the great tribulation in revelation chapter 18 verse 5 for her sins have reached unto heaven and God has remembered our iniquities. So while we're studying about the judgment of Babylon, I need to remind you that the subject of judgment is very, very common in the Bible. Because the Bible reveals to us, number one, there's going to be the judgment of individuals. Number two, there's going to be the judgment of groups of people. That is, gangs of people, groups of people, communities of people who are dedicated to doing the same evil. And if they come together, if they group together to do evil, the judgment is going to come upon them as a group. Number three, the judgment is going to come upon cities. That judgment of God, for indignation of God, the wrath of God, will come upon cities that have given themselves to evil. Number four, the judgment of God will come upon nations. Number five, upon angels. Number six, upon Satan. Number seven, upon all evil doers in every generation, in every age. In Romans chapter 4, two reading verses five and six the judgment of god upon individuals in romans chapter two verse four it tells us very clearly there verse five i mean but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treacherous up unto thy severals against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of god who will render to every man according to his deeds judgment for every individual How about groups of people when groups of people decide that they're going to be united in conspiracy against the word of god against the will of god and as a group they offend the lord they sin against the lord there is a judgment of the group we're told in proverbs chapter 16 verse 5 everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the lord though hand join in hand as a group joining together to do evil he shall not be unpunished number three there's the judgment of god upon cities in matthew chapter 11 i'm reading to you from verse 20 matthew chapter 11 and we're looking at verse 20 
Here are the words of Jesus Christ, as he said, then began he to upbraid to rebuild the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. These were cities. For if the mighty works which were done in, in you had been done in turn Sidon, they would have repented long ago in, in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for turn Sidon at the day of judgment done for you in verse 23 and thou carpanum which are at exalted unto heaven shall be brought down to hell for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in sodom it would have been it will remain until this day you will see them from the words of the lord jesus christ there is going to be judgment of the cities number one of individuals individuals who refuse to repent the judgment of god will come number two upon groups of people who bind themselves together who covenant together who make vows together who conspire together against the word and the will of god judgment will come upon groups and then number three upon cities number four upon nations the nations that forget the word of god the nations that forget the desire the pleasure the commandments of the lord and the disobey or disregard the almighty god judgment will come upon them in psalm 9 i'm reading to you from verse 17 psalm 9 verse 17 the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget god the judgment of god will also come upon angels in fact we are told they are under judgment already many of them those who have sinned against the lord in second peter chapter 2 verse 4 for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them into hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And then Satan himself is going to be judged in Matthew chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire, everlasting torment, prepared for the devil and his angels. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and then we understand that all evil doers will finally face the judgment of god second peter chapter 2 verse 9 in second peter chapter 2 verse 9 we read it says the lord knows how to deliver the, un the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment so that they will be punished that's the reason why we need to learn about the judgment of God. And we need to learn through the cleansing of the blood of Jesus and the forgiveness we receive from the grace of God because Christ has become a savior and a sin bearer. And we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then he takes our sins away. When those sins are taken away, they are being judged on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will not be judged upon the believer anymore if the believer will remain in the righteousness uprightness holiness that the lord has given through the cleansing of the blood of the lamb and so as we look at this message this study today the judgment and destruction of babylon the great we're dividing the message to three parts number one the ruin and the incineration that means the burning for impenitence the impenitence of babylon the ruin the devastation the destruction and the incineration, the burning with fire that will come upon the upon Babylon because of their impenitence. Number two, rejection of the iniquity and influence of Babylon. Babylon would like to draw all the people of the world into hell and will like to have everybody in the world join together with her so that everybody will be under the judgment of God. And yet God is saying, come out of her. And do not be like her, so that you will not partake of the, of the judgment of Babylon. Point number three, retribution for the injustice and infidelity of Babylon. 
retribution for the injustice and the infidelity of Babylon. We come back to point number one, the ruin and the incineration for the because of the impenitence of Babylon. We're looking at Revelation chapter 18 from verse 1. Revelation chapter 18, we're looking at it from verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lighted with his glory. I need to remind you that it was John the Beloved, the apostle, that saw these revelations. And he said, while well, he was looking, he'd seen many things. You know that he saw the mystery Babylon in chapter 17. And then he wondered with great admiration, great amazement. And after that vision had passed by, he saw another vision now. And he saw an angel coming from heaven. And then the glory and the, and the light and the majesty of that angel lighting the whole earth. It was a powerful angel, a mightier angel than the ordinary angels that were sent from heaven to announce the fall of materialistic Babylon. Its appearance and glory lighting the earth. And it was with great visible radiance. Announcing with a strong and mighty voice, that angel declared the verdict of the Almighty God. And what was that verdict? You'll find that in verse 2. Saying, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. As you see the announcement, it says, it's become, uh, this announcement is emphatic. This announcement is irreversible. It is falling, it is falling. And then we're told it, uh, that it has become the habitation, number one, of devils. Number two, the hold of every foul spirit. And then number three, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That means that as, the, as Babylon will fall, that is always remember when we say Babylon in chapter 18, we're talking of the commercial center at the time of the Great Tribulation. We're talking about the capital of the Antichrist at the time of the Great Tribulation. We're talking about the very place where Satan will have his throne, where Satan will have his temple, where Satan will be operating through the Antichrist. And then it says it is going to fall. It's going to be destroyed. There will be devastation that will come upon that materialistic Babylon, the headquarters of the devil and of the Antichrist at that time of the great tribulation. Evil spirits, demons, and all kinds of unclean spirits will resort there and abide there after its fall. The future capital of the Antichrist will re be reduced to a state of utter desolation. And let's look at references of, in other scriptures telling us that Babylon definitely will fall. That this announcement we're hearing is a general announcement, an irreversible announcement. It is the decision of the Almighty God that this judgment eventually will come. We're looking at Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling. Is falling that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And then in chapter 16, verse 19, chapter 16, verse 19, and the great city was divided into three parts. And the city of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. You are sure then, as you read from scripture to scripture, that Babylon is going to face the devastating judgment of God and it's going to be a furry judgment, a fearful judgment, a terrible judgment indeed. In Isaiah chapter 13, Isaiah chapter 13, reading from verse 19, still talking about Babylon. And he's talking about uh, the glory that it had before. And yet it's going to be overthrown. Like Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown because of the terrible sins found in them. In Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19 and Babylon. The glory of kingdoms. The beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. 
it shall never be inhabited neither shall it dwell shall it be dwelt in, shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation neither shall the arabian peach taint there neither shall the shepherds make their fault there it's talking about utter destruction final destruction total destruction irreversible destruction from which it will never rise again and then he tells us in verse 21 and the wild beast of the desert shall lie there and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures and oaths shall dwell there and satires shall dance there in verse 22 and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not pro be prolonged that is the day of the judgment and the day of that devastation coming is very near isaiah was saying in chapter 21 of isaiah isaiah chapter 21 reading from verse 9 and behold here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said babylon is falling is falling and all the graven images of her gods he has broken onto the ground. Uh, you, you know why the Lord is bringing such a devastation, such great judgment upon Babylon? It is because of the sins that are found in Babylon. And because of those sins, the Lord is saying, I'm judging her. I'm bringing devastation, destruction upon her because of the sins. While we're talking about the destruction of Babylon, I want you to remember that for every sinner, you face the same judgment for every backslider every prodigal son who refuses to come back to the fold you are facing the same judgment and it's going to be an irreversible judgment except you turn away from sin and believe on the lord jesus christ in jeremiah chapter 51 jeremiah chapter 51 i'm reading from verse 7 it says babylon has been a golden cup in the lord's hand that made all the earth drunken the nations have drunken of her wine therefore the nations are mad but then we're told in verse 8 babylon is suddenly falling destroyed howl for her weep for her shout for her, scream for her take balm in take balm for her pain if so be she may be healed and then we're told in verse 60 of that same uh, chapter 51 verse 60 so jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that shall come upon babylon even all these words that are written against babylon and jeremiah said unto sheriah when thou comest to babylon and shall see and shall read all these words then shalt thou say, O Lord, as thou spoken against this place, to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And then it says, and it shall be, when thou hast, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of river Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thou shall Babylon sink and shall rise from the, and shall not rise from the evil which I bring upon her. And they shall be weary thus far at the words of Jeremiah. And you understand then what the Lord is telling us that there's going to be a destruction, there's going to be a devastation upon the people. Of, uh, of the land at that time at the time of the great tribulation please come back to revelation chapter 18 in revelation chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 2 again and i want you to notice these words the words is falling it's falling revelation chapter 18 verse 2 and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling it's falling and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. As you look at this and you think about Babylon, I want to tell you that Babylon, although it will be a real city, at the time of the great tribulation, you also need to understand that there is a symbolic message here. That is for everyone, every, every man, every woman, small and great. There's a symbolic message here because there's a kind of symbolic fall. In fact, even for the children of Israel, uh, we can say the same thing. 
And for everyone that knew the Lord before, who had backslidden, gone into evil, gone into sin, we can say the same thing. Babylon is falling, is falling. The sinner is falling, is falling. The backslider is falling, is falling. The incorrigible sinner that will not repent is falling, is falling. Because the declaration of the judgment of God, of the wrath of God upon unrepentant sinners is sure, is certain, is irreversible, is declared in scripture, and it cannot be changed. Now, as you think about the fall of the sinner, or the fall of the backslider, it actually goes step after step. I'm coming to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21. How is a faithful city become an harlot? That's talking about Israel, the fall of Israel. And it's also talking about the one that was a believer before that now is the backslider. How is that faithful one become and hallowed? It was full of judgment, of justice, and righteousness lodged in it. But now, murderers. As we think about this in a symbolic way, what do you learn? Number one, it's a fall from desirable faithfulness. As you think about Israel, as you think about every believer, Anyone that has gone away from the Lord, he used to be faithful, he used to be honest, he used to be loyal, he used to be obedient to the word of God. But then, number one, there is fall from desirable faithfulness. Number two, there is fall from divine favor. That the favor of God is no more there. And God says, I'm going to punish him. I'm going to lay my devastating judgment upon him because I'm withdrawing my favor from him. There is fall from divine favor. Number three, there is fall into defiling fleshly filthiness. There is fall into defiling fleshly filthiness. And that's what we learned about Babylon here. That many, many other people drank of the wine, of the fornication, of the filthiness of Babylon. And you find the people that are like prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. The people that are backsliding and they're not returned to the Lord yet. They are filthy. And they make their filthiness to even affect and influence other people. Number four, there is a fall into deliberate falsehood. Deception. They, 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 they deceive themselves. They say, I am a queen. I will never be a widow. I'm up. I'll never be down. I'm happy. I'll never be sorrowful. That's what Babylon was saying. And when you look at any backslider, he is showing himself in his sin, in his backsliding. I'm all right. There's nothing wrong with me. There's deliberate falsehood. There's falling into that. Number five, there is fall into demonic fellowship. Demonic fellowship. Don't you see there? And when Babylon fell, it says now, it has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every unclean, every unclean spirit, a foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You see, when people backslide, gradually, gradually, and gradually, they backslide and they fall from desirable faithfulness. And they fall from divine favor. Then they fall into defiling fleshly filthiness. They fall into deliberate falsehood. They continue to deceive themselves. And then they fall into demonic fellowship. And then, number six, into deceptive fame. And that's what happened to Babylon. Famous. But it was a deceptive fame. And all the kings of the earth were kind of courting and fellowshipping with her. Because they thought, this is great. This is high. And this is so high that nobody can be as high. If you want to be associated with Babylon. But it's deceptive because it's coming down. Then number seven, if you don't repent... If you remain backslider, if you remain a non-believer, if you remain an incorrigible sinner, the Lord has died for you. The Savior is calling you. The blood of Jesus can wash you and wash you whiter than snow. But if you refuse your sin, number seven, you'll fall into the damnation in the furnace of fire. That's the final fall. The final fall. And you'll find that exact, that's what happened to Babylon. It was burnt with fire eventually. And as you don't want to end up in the bunny lake of fire, what the Lord is saying is that you will repent. Please come to Revelation chapter 18. I'm looking at verse 3. For all nations are drunk of the wine of the wrath and of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the mansions of the earth are what's rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The reason for the ruin, for the devastation, for the judgment of future Babylon is clearly stated here. That's just what I read to you just now. That all the nations have drunk of the wine, of the wrath of her fornication. 
and the kings of the earth. They have committed fornication with her. And the mansions of the earth have watched rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She beguiled, she deceived, she corrupted the nations of the earth, leading them into pollution and sin, and leading them away far from God into perdition. That's the reason the judgment was coming upon Babylon. That's the reason the judgment is coming upon all the people that live in sin and they refuse to repent. Revelation chapter 18 verse 9. In Revelation chapter 18 verse 9, the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously, delicately with her, shall bewail her and shall lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. In chapter 17 verse 2, Revelation 17 verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have, made, have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. When somebody is filthy like Babylon, you are going to corrupt other people. You are going to pollute other people. You are going to negatively, negatively influence other people. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 4. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4, here is the revelation of the word of God concerning this uh, wine of the cup of this cup of the wine of fornication drunk by all the people Isaiah 14 verse 4 that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how has the oppressor ceased the golden city ceased then in verse 22 for I will rise up against them says the Lord of hosts and cut off from Babylon, the name and the remnant and the son and the nephew, says the Lord, I will also make it a possession for the beaten and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the basin of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. In verse 24, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Verse 27. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Uh, what a great uh, thing that will be coming upon Babylon. And what a great sorrow, what a great judgment, devastation will be coming upon the sinners as well. And that judgment is irreversible. That's why the Lord is calling upon you that if you want to escape the judgment of God, this is your chance and you need to repent. I come to point number two. Rejection of the iniquity and influence of Babylon. The rejection of the iniquity and the influence of Babylon. In Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. Revelation chapter 18 I'm reading from verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And you will see here, if you are partakers of the sins of Babylon, then you will be partakers of the plagues of Babylon. If you do the same thing that unbelievers do, then you'll have the same judgment that those unbelievers are going to have. If you do the things that the Gentiles do, their tradition, their evil, then you are going to be a partaker of their judgment as well. That's why the Lord is saying, come out of her, my people. Actually, you know, we're studying the time of the book of Revelation. There will be those at the time of the, of the great tribulation that have not taken the mark of the beast. And there will still be hope for them. And the Lord will be talking to them. Come out of the midst of that Babylon. Come out of all those activities that were go that will be going on in the capital city of the Antichrist. At the time of the great tribulation, come out. And those are the people that have not drunk of the wine of the fornication of Babylon. These are the people that have not been corrupted by mystery Babylon or by materialistic Babylon. And the message of the Lord to every one of the people at that time will be come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. 
But I want to remind you that this message is a general message. It's a, it's a message that has gone out even to generations of people because the Lord right from the beginning has been saying, come out of her, come out of her, come out of her. And even this very day, the Lord is still saying, come out of her. As you look at the scriptures, you see the warnings from the, for the people of God, come out of Babylon, come out of Egypt, come out of all the, all the things that are that evil that the people of the world are doing. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord your God. In Isaiah chapter 48 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 48, looking at verse 20. Go ye forth of Babylon. Flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare ye. Tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. That's talking to the people of God, the people of Israel. As the Lord was telling them, come out. Don't be a partaker of the sins of Babylon. And don't be a partaker of the plagues and the devastation, the destruction, the fair indignation of the Lord coming upon Babylon. In Jeremiah chapter 50, I'm reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 50, reading from verse 8. You'll see it's still the same message come out. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 8, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goes before the flocks. That means get your heels run out. Get out of that place. In verse 9 it says, For lo, I will raise and curse the and cause to come a gate up against Babylon, an assembly of great nations from the north, from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her, for they shall, uh, she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain, and a Chaldean shall be a spoil. And all that spoil her shall be satisfied, says the Lord. That's why the Lord was telling the people of God, come out of the midst of her. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6. In Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6, still the same message is repeated over and over so that none of us will miss it. And you don't remain in spiritual Babylon. You don't remain in mystic Babylon. You don't remain in mystery Babylon, even materialistic Babylon. Come out of her. In chapter 51 of Jeremiah verse 6, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. And be not cut off in our iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. In verse 45. That same chapter, verse 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her. And deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And you'll see the message that the Lord is giving to some people. He's telling us, come out of Babylon. And to the people of the time of the great tribulation, those who have not received the mark of the Antichrist, of the beast, those who have not uh, taken, uh, made their heart to become perpetual slaves to the evil one, the Lord will be telling them, you still have a chance, come out of us so you'll not be destroyed, you'll, you'll not be devoured with the judgment and the plagues of the people that have forsaken the Lord. Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. Verses 6 and 7. Oh, oh, come forth and flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the, of the heaven, says the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. The Lord is saying, if you are dwelling with the daughter of Babylon, the people that are given to evil, the people that are given to licentiousness, the people that are given to fornication, the people that are given to immorality, it says, come out, deliver yourself, you people who are dwelling with the daughter of Babylon. If the Lord is warning us so much like this, how are we going to remain? Well, the people that are still living in sin, and then we're doing the same things that they're doing, going the same way they're going. Don't you understand? 
if you do the same thing sinners do and go the same way sinners go and dwell in the same place as sinners dwell and you have the same tradition sinners have have the same character sinners have you'll partake of the judgment of God coming upon the sinners and that's why you'll find in fact if you go back to Genesis in Genesis chapter 19 when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah here was the same message that the Lord was sending those angels to give unto Lord and his wife and the two daughters come out come out don't be a partaker of the evil of Sodom and Gomorrah don't be a partaker of the evil of the Sodomites and it is then you'll be you'll be able to escape from the judgment of the Lord in Genesis chapter 19 reading from verse 12 and the men said unto the Lord as thou hear any besides son-in-law or, or thy sons or thy and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place and that's what the Lord is still telling us today judgment is coming and because judgment is coming you don't want to wait until that judgment day the Lord is saying come out and is your son still in the world your daughter still in the world your wife still in the world your husband still in the world is your husband a backslider is your wife a backslider? Are your friends backsliders? Your father, your mother, are they backsliders? Are they, have they gone back into the world? This is the time for you to do like Lord and go out to them and seek out for them and tell them come out of the world because the judgment of God is coming upon this world in verse 13. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to, to destroy it. And then we're told in verse 17, and it came to pass, when they, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And that's the same message the Lord is telling us. You remember that Jesus even referred to this, and he said, Remember not why. Remember Lot's wife, because Lot's wife was kind of a drag in her feet, and eventually looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. But the Lord is reminding us, if there are people that are doing evil, whether they're in Sodom or they're in Gomorrah, whether they're in Babylon or they're in Syria, whether they're in Egypt or in any other place, come out of among them. Don't join them lest you partake of their evil. Or maybe they are even among the people of God because we're told of some people among the people of God in Numbers chapter 16. They truly they were doing evil. But eventually the Lord sent message to the people of God, come out from among them. In fact, the Bible says these were, these were famous people. Numbers chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Isaac, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son of Peleth, the son of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses. And were certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, and men of renown. Uh, you see here, uh, these were people that actually, they were famous in the assembly. And the people of Israel knew them as part of them. Eventually, a problem arose. And they were against the word of God, against the plan of God, against the leadership in the assembly of the people of God. And in verse 12, verse 12, And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Rebellion rose up among the children of Israel. And eventually, the Lord said, See what the Lord said in verse 23. In verse 23, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And you see what the Lord is telling us, that uh, when some people group together, when they conspire together, they want to do evil, they want to sin, and they want to go against the word of God, the will of God, or the leadership of the church. And then you are thinking, well, this is not Gomorrah, this is not Egypt, and this is not Babylon, this is church. Yet you understand that these people, Korah, and Abiram, when they rise up against the leadership in the church, or against the word of God, the Lord is saying, don't join them. Don't join them, because judgment is going to come upon every rebel. And judgment is going to come upon every group and gang of conspirators. And the word of God is saying, don't join them. Because if you join them, you are going to be a partaker of their evil. As well as of their plagues and of their judgment. Speak unto the congregation saying, in verse 24, get you up 
from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And in verse 26, and he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. Separate yourself from them. Don't join them. Don't stay with them. Don't even visit them. And don't partake of their rebellion. Don't partake of their evil of their sin. Because judgment is going to come upon sinners, upon backsliders who are incorrigible. And touch nothing of their tents of theirs. Lest ye be consumed in all their sins. And so in verse 27, so get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. On every side, they and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little ones. Their wives joined them, and their sons and daughters joined them, and their little ones joined them. we we'll support Papa, we we'll support Daddy, we we'll support him. They call him rebel, yes, we we'll rebel with him. They call him disobedient. Yes, we'll disobey with him. And because they supported him, they didn't honor the man of God, Moses, in their midst that told them, with the word of the Lord come out from among them. In verse 28, and Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And then Moses went on, and it says in verse 31, and it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went now alive into the pitch. And the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all the all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Lest they are swallow us up also. And there came out fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. Do you see the danger of following after the people of Babylon? Following after the backsliders? Following after the people that rebel against the Lord? If you don't come out from among them, the same judgment that came upon them will come upon you. That's why the Lord is saying, come out from among them. And that's why the psalmist is saying, oh Lord, you know my heart, you know my life. I'm not part of them and I will never be part of them. And the decision of the psalmist in Psalm 26 is the same decision the Lord is calling upon you to make in Psalm 26 reading from verses 4 and 5 I have not sat with vain men vain persons no never neither will I go in with dissemblers I have hated the congregation of evil doers and will not siege with the wicked and that's what the Lord is telling us that's challenge the Lord is giving us look at this Psalm of David and David is saying oh Lord you know my heart you know my down sitting. You know where I go. You know where I stay. You know my friends. You know my familiar people. And you know me, Lord, that I will not sit with vain people. Neither will I go in with the semblance. The people that are going against your word, arguing against your word, rebelling against your word. Oh, Lord, you know my heart. I will never be with them. I have hated the congregation of evil doers and will not sit with the wicked. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 52 and we're looking at verse 11 it's still the same message that the lord is giving us chapter 52 verse 11 depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch not touch no unclean thing go ye out of the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord and when you see some people that are going away from the fellowship when you see the people that are going their own way, they want to do their own thing. The Lord is saying, don't join them. 
don't be part of them. And if you really want to serve the Lord and you want to make it at the time of the rapture, the Lord is saying, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this, touch no unclean sin, and it will present things to you about this message, about that one. You'll not be partakers with them. It says you go out from the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessel of the Lord. There's a parallel passage in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. If you are a compromiser, you cannot be a part of the people of God. If you are not yielding yourself fully to the Lord, you will not be part of the people of God. It's only when you come out of the midst of her and you give yourself totally, completely unto the Lord. There will be no compromise in your life. You are cleansed, you are washed, you are purged, you are purified. And then all the effects and influence of Babylon will not be upon you. Please come to Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 again. Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. What's the Lord telling us? Number one, come out of the sinful congregation. Come out of the sinful congregation. Is there a Korah? Is there an Abiram? Is there a Dathan? That are separated from the people of God and they are having now a separate fellowship and the Lord is saying as a sinful congregation. It's not approved of God. It's not going to be blessed of God. It is a congregation of rebellious people. And the Lord is saying, number one, come out of that sinful congregation. Number two, come out of the seductive company. Seductive company. You see, the, the company of Babylonians, they're very seductive. Very seductive. And they will tease and they will entice. And they will draw you into evil. And with their enticement, with their seduction, they will pull you into evil. And the Lord is saying, come out of this seductive company. Number three, come out of, of subtle corruption. Come out of subtle corruption. You know, when we say it's subtle, you will not know. Eve did not know. When Satan came, as God said, you will not eat of every tree of the garden. It's very subtle. And the devil is still subtle today. And he brings corruption into people. He introduces corruption to people in a very subtle manner. But the Lord is saying, come out of that subtle corruption. Number four, come out of the secret cults. Don't let them hear the secret cult. We'll have the covenant together. Don't let daddy know. Don't let mommy know. That's a secret cult. We'll do it, we'll do it here in school. And they will not know what's going on in town. The secret cult. And then we'll put our blood together and we're going to be blood brothers and blood sisters and we caught ourselves, we drink our blood together. The secret cult. And the Lord is saying that's Babylonian tradition, that's Babylonian practice. That's the reason why the judgment is coming upon Babylon. And it says, come out of the secret cult. Number five, come out of spiritual captivity. You come into a cage. Once you are deceived by those Babylonians and you join them and you remain with them, it's going to be captivity. And you will find that a spiritual captivity in your life. And the Lord is saying, come out of the spiritual captivity. Number six, come out of shameful conformity. Dress like us. Eat like us. Drink like us. And smoke like us. And use hard drugs like us. Be fraudulent like us. Use a computer to practice fraud like us. We'll teach you how to do it. They will not catch you. Gamble like us. That's conformity. Being conformed with them, but it's shameful. And the Lord is saying, come out of that shameful conformity. Number seven, come out of the sensual compromise. And a compromise that your flesh will like to partake in. Your flesh will like to take part in. And the Lord is saying, come out. Come out. If you're going to get to heaven, there'll be a clear demarcation. There'll be a clear separation between you and the people of Babylon and the people of the world. Look at that verse 4 again. And I had another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her her plagues. I pray the Lord will give us attentive hearts and obedient hearts in Jesus' name.
Because association or nearness to Babylon will always corrupt and will always contaminate. The universal message from God is that those who would remain holy and pure must separate themselves from all the associations of evil so that you will not receive of our plagues because the judgment of God that will come upon the guilty city upon Babylon will make no discrimination among those who will be found there the only way of escape out of judgment is that you come out and you will come out I said you will come out I come to point number three retribution for the injustice and infidelity of Babylon we're looking at Revelation chapter 18 verse 5 Revelation chapter 18 I'm looking at verse 5 it says in verse 5 for our sins have reached unto heaven and God has remembered our iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled feel to her double how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously delicately so much torment and sorrow give her for she says in her heart i see it a queen and i'm no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burnt to a fire for strong is the lord god who judges her mystery babylon or mystical babylon as well as materialistic babylon will be punished severely that's what we've just read reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled filled to her double sin always attracts divine judgment and wrath sin anytime anywhere with any person always attracts divine judgment and divine wrath think about it before the flood sin attracted judgment and before the time of the law, we have read it in Genesis chapter 19. Sin attracted judgment that we don't have the whole Bible to read. We're just living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we didn't know any better. Our fathers did it like that. Our friends are doing it like that. That's what we're following then. And it's not our fault. It's example, bad example that we see that we're following. Judgment will still come because sin always attracts divine judgment and divine wrath. Even during the time of the law, that's during the time of Moses, the people that sinned and the people that disobeyed the word of God, judgment came upon them. I about among those without the law. We don't have the law. We're not among the children of Israel. Even those that are without the law, still sin attracts divine judgment and divine wrath. Ne ne um, this uh, man, um, Nebuchadnezzar, did not have the law of the, ch of the people of Israel. And yet when he came and he said, Is this not Babylon that my hands have built? The voice came from heaven, it has been declared unto you. You'll become like an animal. And judgment came immediately. How about the people of Nineveh? They didn't have the law of Moses. All the same, Jonah went in there and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown, shall be destroyed. How about the time of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ was on earth. Does that mean that God will suspend judgment? There will be no judgment at all? No every time even at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ there was still judgment because sin always attracts divine judgment and divine wrath that's why the Lord told uh, those people at his own time while he was talking to them he said I tell you except ye repent ye shall likewise perish because uh, you know sin always will attract the judgment of God okay maybe when we're in the church and we're under the roof of the church and under the protection of the four walls of the church, then we will not be judged whatever we do. No. Anywhere, everywhere, every time, sin will always attract divine judgment and wrath. I'm sure you have not forgotten Ananas and Sapphira. When they sin, the judgment came upon them because that is what always happens. And even to the time of the end, we're told in Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading to you from verse 11. Revelation chapter 20. Reading from verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, 
from whose face the earth and the heaven fled, fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is a second death and whatsoever whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that tells you from the very beginning to the very end from Genesis to Revelation, every period, every dispensation of, of man here on earth, sin always attracts divine judgment and divine wrath. The greater the sin, the greater the judgment. And here that's why it says in the passage we read in Revelation chapter 18, For our sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered our iniquities. The sins of the people of the period of the great tribulation will be so flagrant and known all over the earth and also in heaven. And it says torment and sorrow will come upon the proud and the pleasure-seeking sinners at that time. And the Bible says she has glorified herself. She has lived deliciously or delicately. And then for she has said in her heart, I see it as a queen and I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow because of that. Her judgment will come suddenly there for shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong is the lord god that judges her and that's why the lord is telling us that uh, we need to escape escape from the sins of the world around us repent turn to the lord and become born again in ezra chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 ezra Chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Here the word of the Lord is uh, reminding us in verse 6 and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blushed to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, our trespasses our trespass is grown up unto the heaven since the days of our fathers have we been in a great distress tra uh, trespass unto this day and for our iniquities have we our kings and our priests been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands to the sword and to captivity and to a spoil and to confusion of face as it is this day here Ezra confessed it was a great sin that the people of Israel had gone into and then it's because of that the judgment of God was coming upon them. Isaiah chapter 47. In Isaiah chapter 47, I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 47. And we're looking at it from verse 10. Here it says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it has perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. It wasn't Babylon that, only, that said that. Not only Babylon. But all these other people too, they were saying the same thing. I sit as a queen. And nobody can remove me. I am immovable. Whatever I do. Wherever I go. And whatever evil thing I say, they say, nothing can remove them. That's what they were saying. You have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, nobody sees me. And you have said, my wisdom and my knowledge, eventually it has perverted you. And you have said in your heart, I am, and there is none else beside me. In verse 11, therefore, shall evil come upon thee. That's the judgment of God upon the people that will not repent. Evil shall come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. And the Lord was telling the people, or telling them, whatever you think you are relying upon, and whatever you think you are leaning upon, that you are continuing in evil, that judgment is definitely going to come. In verse 12, stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. 
Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, and fire shall burn them, and they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame, and there shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to seed before it. Uh, the Lord was telling the people that judgment was very definite, and it will come upon them. Sephaniah chapter 2. In Sephaniah chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 15. And we're talking about the sure judgment of God upon the unrepentant sinners, impenitent sinners. Uh, the, the people that are incorrigible as sinners and backsliders, that the judgment of God is sure upon them. If they die suddenly, then they go to hell suddenly because of the sin in their lives. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 15, this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly. That said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How is she become a desolation, a place for bees to lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall his and work his hand. It's telling us that judgment will come upon the people that will not repent, and that judgment is irreversible. Is there a way to escape these judgments of God? Yes, there's a way to escape them. What way do we have to escape the judgment of God? That's to have genuine salvation in Christ. When you are born again, you are a child of God. Then you pass from condemnation unto life. You pass from damnation unto justification. And the Lord takes away your sin because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you are truly saved and you are going to escape the judgment of God, what's the evidence of such salvation? Of such salvation that preserves you and protects you from the final, fairy, furious judgment of God. The evidence of that salvation, because you know, there are many people that say, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed. And yet, we know that from the evidence of their lives, they're not born again at all. What are the things we'll be looking for if you are truly born again? Number one, faith in the Savior. You have repented of your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ has come to your heart, has come to your life, changed you and turned you around. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Number one, evidence in your life then, faith in the Savior. Number two, fruit of the Spirit. If you are really born again, here is what will be in your life. There will be the fruit of the Spirit. What's that? There will be love and joy, and peace, and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's the evidence that you are born again. If there's no love in your heart, if there's hatred there, and you're always sorrowful, and there's no peace, there's contention, and you're always impatient, and then you are hard-hearted, you are not gentle, and you are contentious, and you are bad, you are not good, you are not faithful, you are not meek, but you are proud, and you are not self-controlled. Don't tell me you are born again. Because the Bible says, if you are born again, the number one evidence will be the faith you have in the Savior. Number two, the fruit of the Spirit. Number four, number three, there will be fellowship with the saints. Fellowship with the saints. If you are born again, you have fellowship with the people of God. You will not fellowship with unbelievers. You will not fellowship with evildoers. You will not like the tent and the congregation of sinners and backsliders. You will want to remain in the fellowship of the people of God. The Bible says, then they that gladly receive the word. They were baptized the same day. And the same day, there were about 300, uh, 3,000 of them. And they continued steadfastly in their apostles' doctrine and fellowship. When you are truly born again, you will continue in the fellowship of the saints. Number four, forgiveness of slanderers. The people that slander you. The people that offend you. The people that hurt you. The people that do something that was painful to you. If you are truly born again, you'll forgive them. You'll not be in constant contention and constant fighting and, and constant pulling and dragging and scattering with them and hurting them and revenging and retaliating. If you are truly born again, you are going to be forgiving all the people that have slandered you and offended you. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 18, reading from verse 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. 
Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. If you are truly born again, you'll be able to forgive the people that offend you. If you are not able to forgive, if there's bitterness there, if there's rancor there, if there's a spirit of revenge there, you are not born again. If you die in that condition, you're going to have your final part, eternal part, or the Babylonians. Number five, there'll be freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Number one, faith in the Savior. Number two, fruit of the Spirit. Number three, fellowship with the saints. Number four, forgiveness of the slanderers. And then, number five, there'll be freedom from sin. That's the evidence you are born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. In First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3 from verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. But we shall be like him, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every one, every man that has this hope in him, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And then he tells us in verse 8, he that committed sin is of the devil. If you are living in sin, you are not born again. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. If you are still stealing, you are not born again. You are still fighting, you are not born again. And if you're still practicing fraud, you're not born again. And if you're still getting drunk, you're not born again. If you're living in secret sin, you're not born again. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. There'll be freedom from sin. Number six, there'll be feeding on the scripture. When you're born again, when you're saved, the genuine salvation that will take you to heaven, you'll have love for the scripture. And you will want to read the scripture, study the scripture. It will be your delight, it will be your joy, wanting to feed on the scriptures. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Number seven, there will be faithfulness at all times. Faithfulness at all seasons. Uh, when you are truly born again, uh, then that's what you'll have. Faithfulness at all seasons. And then number eight, there will be following the shepherd. Following the shepherd. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are they which followeth after the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. Uh, the Lord has spoken to us his watch today. And the Lord has told us the way we can escape the devastating judgment that is coming upon this world, it is that, it's that we get really saved. And when we get really saved, there will be faith in the Savior as sin bearer. There will be the fruit of the Spirit. There will be the fellowship of the saints and the forgiveness of slanderers. There will be freedom from sin. There will be feeding on the scriptures, faithfulness at all seasons. Then you will be following after the shepherd every day of your life. It is very important that you check up. Are you in the fold? Are you born again? Are you a real child of God? Or are you like one of these Babylonians in the midst of the people of God? When the judgment shall come, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, here we are. We have heard your word. We don't just want to hear as people hear without doing something about it. Oh Lord, we want to escape the judgment of God. And we know that death can come at any time. The rapture can take place at any time. Lord, here we come. If you have not been saved, give yourself to the Lord. Let him be your sin bearer. Let him be the one that has made atonement for your sin. Let him be your savior. And say, Lord, I turn away from my sin. I get away from my sin. I repent from my sin. 
I vomit all those evil things. I will not continue in them. Oh Lord, forgive me. Change my life. Turn me around. And the Lord will have mercy upon you. And you will be saved. Give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash you. And wash you whiter than snow. If you are not born again, tell me, where will you spend eternity? What will your answer be? Eternity? Eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Many are choosing Christ today. They are turning from all their sins away. Those people, heaven shall their happy portion be. But you, but you, when other people are going to heaven, when other people are rejoicing in heaven, when other people are in fellowship with the Almighty God in heaven, where will you spend eternity? Those who are living the straight and the narrow way. Those who are joining these new, new churches that are springing up. And they want it the easy way. They want to be in the broad way. They're living the narrow way. Sad will their final ending be. They'll be lost through a long eternity. Eternity, eternity. Lost through a long eternity. What's the way of escape? What's the Lord calling you to do today? Repent. Believe this very hour. This is the moment of repentance and the moment of salvation. This is the time for the backslider to return to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a backslider. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. Have mercy upon me. I repent. I believe this very hour. Trust in the Savior's grace and power. Then will your joyous answer be, you are saved. You are saved through a long eternity. What a wonderful thing it will be if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. So that you will not perish when this world is on fire. When the judgment of God will come upon Babylon. When the judgment of God will come upon the careless, upon the worldly, upon the backslider, upon the rebellious, upon the people that have not taken the Lord as their personal savior. If you will come to the Lord today and say, Lord, I'm convicted of my sin. I'm convicted of my carelessness. I'm convicted of my disobedience. I'm convicted of my Babylonian lifestyle. I'm convicted of my Egyptian lifestyle. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. And then you look to the Lord Jesus Christ, the rock of ages, clear for me. Oh Lord, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from your even wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, wash me. Lord, purge me. Lord, purify me. Cleanse me from its guilt and its power. Lord, I know not the labors of my hand. Come fulfill thy law's command. Could my zeal no respite no? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin cannot atone. Thou my Savior, thou the Lamb of God, thou the one that died for me, thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling, naked to thee. I come for dress, helpless, to thee I come for grace, foul. I to the fountain fly, wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me, Savior, or else I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids shall close in death, when I soar to the world's unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, Lord be thou the rock of ages clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let me hide myself in thee. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. When are you going to get saved? How long are you going to be playing and gambling with your soul? How long are you going to remain in sin? Why don't you call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here I come. Here I come. Here I come. Forgive my sin. Are you like a little boy coming to the Bible study without knowing why you are here? Are you like a gambler coming to a particular place like this, the gateway to heaven, where your sins can be forgiven, where your life can be transformed, and you don't know why you are here? When are you going to get saved? When are you going to get born again? When are you going to get transformed? When are you going to escape the judgment of God that will come upon the whole of Babylon? Are you saying, I sit as a queen? I sit as a queen. I'll be no widow. There'll be no judgment. Are you deceiving yourself? Come out of that deception so that the Lord will cleanse you and the Lord will forgive you and the Lord will change your life. The Lord is calling you today. The Lord is calling you today. When are you going to be born again? When are you going to repent? When are you going to say, Lord, I surrender? Oh Lord, I yield my life. Let your grace come into my life. I hold on to the hand of the Lord by faith. And I know we are saved by grace through faith. That not of yourself, it is the gift of God. The Lord is willing to save you today. And if you have been backsliding like the prodigal son, wake up. 
come to yourself and say, Lord, I'm coming back home. Lord, I'm coming back home. Long enough you have remained in sin. Long enough you have remained in the, in the far country. Long enough you have remained in deception and falsehood. But today you need to come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I need your forgiveness. I need your cleansing. I need your atonement. I need your salvation. I need your righteousness. Write my name in the book of life. Oh Lord, help me to be serious with my soul. Serious with my salvation. Serious with life eternal. The Lord is calling you today. Why don't you come? The Lord is calling you today. Why don't you come? The Lord is calling you today. Why don't you repent? Why don't you say bye-bye to Babylon? Bye-bye to Egypt. Bye-bye to the ways of the world. Come out from among them and be a separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And then I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore dearly beloved all these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh. And from all the filthiness of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of of God, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Here we are today, you are at the very gate of heaven. The chance is there for you today to repent. The chance is there for you to be righteous today. The chance is there for you today to say, Lord, here I am. I give myself completely unto you. Uh, the Lord is saying he can forgive you now. He can cleanse you now. He can give you his grace now. He can, he can change your life now. He can make you a new creature now. He can crucify that Adamic nature right now. And he can approach that evil sin from your heart right now. So that you'll have the grace to follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. My friend, where will you spend eternity? If you miss it at this time, where will you spend eternity? If you're backsliding, you don't return to the Lord. Where do you want to spend eternity? Or those people there that have gone away and you're thinking of, well, I'm, I'm casting out devils, I'm prophesying, I'm doing many wonderful works. And ye workers of iniquity, where will you spend eternity? It's not about miracles, it's not about healing the sick. It is about living a righteous life, a godly life. It's living it, the Christ-like life, a life that is free from sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The seed of God remains abides in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. Make sure you settle it with the Lord today. Before you go, come out of that sinful congregation. Come out of that subtle corruption that is coming upon you. Come out of that subtle compromise. Come out of those evil things. And then come out straight and clean. And let the Lord know that you actually belong to him. Come out, come out, and then the Lord will receive you. And then you'll be a child of God. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you. You'll be clean through and through. And then the grace of God will be abundant to your life. Then you'll be able to live a life that, is, that pleases the Lord. And should you die anytime, or should the rapture happen anytime, you'll be able to go with the saints, and then you'll be in heaven forever and ever, rejoicing with the people of God. After you've come out of Babylon, after you've come out of sin, don't go back. Remain in righteousness. And when the Lord shall come, let him meet you in that righteous life that will qualify us for eternal fellowship with the Lord.